Hi, this is George Mott with Enterprise DNA, and in this video, we are going to look at anti-joins in Excel Power Query. Okay, so let me kick you a scenario here. We've got two lists of experts. These are fictitiously generated, although some of the names may be familiar. And let's say I've got on the left, Python experts, and on the right are my Power BI experts. And what I wanna know is, I can see that there are some shared names but I wanna find out who is only a Python expert and who is only a Power BI expert. That's what we're gonna be able to do with anti-joins and we can do this in two directions. Um, so the left anti-join is going to be table one here to the left. Who are the values or what are the values that are only to be found on that left table? Who only does Python in this case? Right anti-join, the other side, same idea. Who only does Power BI? And we have the matches there. Okay, so let's run this in Excel. We're gonna have two tables. We're gonna have the population of the US in 1950 and then again in 2020. And what I wanna find out is which cities are only found on one of those tables. Okay, so let's try this out. Okay, so I'm over here in Excel. Now you'll have this data set available to you. We'll provide the, the download. And I've got 1950, 2020, the populations of each uh, year in the census. These are the top 10 cities by population for those census years. And I wanna know which are unique. So, you know, we know New York is big, we know Chicago's big, et cetera. Uh, but which of these weren't on the 1950 census or vice versa? And that's what I'm gonna be able to do with Power Query. Okay, so I'm gonna get into my query editor. So I'm just gonna edit this query or say that I'm gonna edit it. And I'm gonna to go to Merge Queries as new. So we have our population of 1950. And I'm gonna select my population of 2020. The common relationship is going to be city, and we want a join kind of left anti. One of the less common ones, it is at the bottom, but it's still pretty helpful as you're gonna see. So I'm gonna select left anti, and we're ready to click okay. So there is our matches that are only available in 1950. Uh, we're gonna see cities like Detroit, Cleveland, St. Louis. So the story holds up that these Midwestern Rust Belt towns have lost population since then. Uh, you're gonna see this table column over here. Now, if you wanted to bring in information from the uh, 2020 census, that's what these columns are for. I'm not really concerned about this stuff. All I wanted is the list of names. So we're just gonna leave this as is right now. And let's call this, uh, I'm gonna call this anti-1950. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm gonna go back to my 1950 table and let's run this thing again. Oh, I don't want to append. I want to merge. And we're going to do 2020. Now, same idea. What's the relationship? It's going to be city on city. Now, this time we're going to do a right, right anti-join. And a right anti-join is going to say, well, okay, what are the cities that are only found in 2020 and not 1950? So if I click OK, we're going to see the opposite here. Uh, all we have to do in this case is click on the table and we're gonna get the information from that right table. Uh, right anti-join is a little less common than, than left anti-join. I mean, in theory, it does the same thing. And in this case, what it's telling us is, hey, uh, here are the cities that were only found in the 2020 census, right? So if we look at this, we see a lot of Texas, we see California, et cetera. So the, the Sun Belt idea, people moving to the Southern and Western states seems to hold up in, in the data. And let's call this one uh, anti 2020. Okay, so we're done here. 
I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let's just close and load this uh, to connections and I'll make sure that you have this data set available. Let's hop over to a recap and we'll be done with the anti-joins for now. Okay, so anti-joins are, are really helpful if you're trying to figure out you've got two data tables or you could do multiple, but we, we just did two. And you wanna see, well, what are the changes from, from the two? So this could be useful in cases like, you know, you're trying to figure out what customers haven't placed an order you could use an anti-join there. Maybe you wanna figure out any unique values and maybe one specific location, if there are things that are selling one place that don't another. So it, it's an interesting way to use a join, almost as like a filter on, on your, your table. So that is anti-joins. Hope it got you thinking about how you might be able to use it. If you're using anti-joins now, let us know how you're doing it. If you see a use case for anti-joins, let us know what it is. And thank you again for tuning in. Again, this is George Mount from Enterprise DNA, and thanks for checking out our stuff. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like, it really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.